Well, welcome back, Nuggets. It's week three already. Can you believe it? This week, again, you have seven roots, not ten. And again, that's because we're building every week. So the roots that you're going to get today are an and n, anthropo, apt and et, aqua, arc, art, and odd. Let's get started. First, we have some lovely flowers here. Now, if you go to Lowe's or Walmart or any type of nursery, you're gonna see that there are two different types of flowers. There are annuals, which only bloom for one year, and then there are perennials, which usually cost more, but sometimes they pay off because they come back every year. And this is a photo of mums, which are a really common perennial uh, that you see blooming in the fall. Very popular in October. On the right side, this is actually a picture of my sister Maria and her husband Chris. They're both in the Air Force as EOD bomb techs. And this photo, it was taken the day of their first wedding anniversary. And every year they take a picture of them holding the previous year's picture. So anniversary also uses the root an. And can you guess what it is? You're correct, it means year. Anthropo. Let's start with the photos on the left. Our first word that uses this root is anthropology. Now some people are familiar with this word because they watch the popular television show Bones and she's a forensic anthropologist. So she studies uh, humans, particularly human remains, with the object of solving crime. The other photo here is one that I just pulled off the internet. Um, I did a search for um, anthropologists in the field, and this came up. And you can see this particular group of people are studying, and I looked this up, I read the article. This is the Matisse Indian tribe. And uh, the, the people in the back who are wearing Western clothing, uh, those are anthropologists. So instead of studying bones, they study people by actually going and spending time from them. So there are lots of different variations of anthropology. Our other pictures on the right, you see different hands holding up the globe, and we see Oprah cutting the ribbon on her school in South Africa. Our second word is philanthropy. Oprah is a very well-known philanthropist um, because she gives to causes that benefit other humans. Um, phila means love, so literally out of the love for other human beings. When people donate their time or their financial resources, we call that philanthropy. And the people who give that money or give that time are known as philanthropists. Um, and there are lots of philanthropists throughout history. Bill Gates is one example. Um, Alexander Carnegie uh, donated lots of money to build all the libraries that you see around the United States. So do you have it figured out? Do you know what anthropo means? Ding, ding, ding. Human means human. Study of humans and the love and support of humans. Next root, at and et. First of all, let's look at a word that uses two roots. Now, in, like as in incorrect, in means not. So somebody is not at. Well, if you notice, this cheerleader is holding the go sign upside down. So she's enthusiastic, but she's not holding the sign the right way. So when someone's inept at something, that means that they're not particularly good at it or skilled at it. Over here we have a couple different pictures and our word is aptitude. Uh, if this baby right here could actually play Beethoven we would say that he had an amazing aptitude for music. The two pictures on the right and on the bottom these are both pictures of it, both a test and I have the SAT logo. As you know the SAT is a one of the standard entrance exams that you will take um, when you apply to college. So these tests, and really any test that you take, whether it's a physical fitness test or the ASVAB for the military or the SAT, these tests are designed to measure um, the level of skill and knowledge and expertise that you have. So apt or apt means fitted, suited, or it can also mean to fasten. 
So just to break this down a little bit more, because I think this is a, a difficult one for some people. Inept, she is not well suited to her job as a cheerleader if she's holding uh, the cheer card improperly. No one can read it. Whereas our tests, our aptitude tests, they measure whether you are well fitted or well suited to do something. So for example, when you take the ASVAB test, let's say if you're going into the military, that test determines what types of jobs you are well fitted or suited for. Aqua, this should be an easy one. We have some visitors to an aquarium. Isn't that beautiful? Looks amazing. Have you ever been to the Baltimore Aquarium? I haven't been yet. I want to go. And then on the right, uh, so we have some beautiful architecture. And this, is, of course, is a picture of a Roman aqueduct. And I include a little graphic if you're curious how it works. There are lots of cool YouTube videos out there. So check it out if you're a history buff. Um, but aqueducts were mainly used to move water, and as I'm sure you can figure out, aqua means water. All right, this looks like it's spelled arch, but it's technically pronounced arc. We don't say the ch at the end. So let's look at our photos on the left first. Uh, you're probably not familiar with these two pieces of technology. They're not around anymore. They're obsolete. Um, you can't go into a store and buy one in most places unless it's an antique store or it's a fake reproduction. And we would say that both of these uh, musical players are archaic. This is an example of a phonograph and a Victrola. So back in the day people used to listen to their music off of wax. Come a long way from that to our portable music devices, huh? So that's archaic, old, out of date. Now on the right side, we have kind of a totally different picture. Do you recognize this dude? I know, he, he has a lot of swag, right? This comes to us from the Renaissance. This is King Henry VIII, who had a zillion wives, killed some of them, divorced some more, all trying to get an heir. He was a British monarch, okay? So archaic and monarch. This one's a hard one to guess, but give it a shot. What do you think? That's right. Arc means primitive. Um, by primitive, that means very old or very early, um, like the first one. It can just mean old, and it can also mean ruler, um, like the first of his kind, the leader of the people. Um, that's kind of the way that that particular part of the root works. So it can be used either way. It can be used to suggest that something is really, really old, or it can be used to suggest that something is first, or number one, or the ruler. Art. Now, don't get hung up on art class. But the term that I'm going to give to you first is kind of related, so this should help you remember it. Artisan. Every picture on the left, we have people making things with their hands. An artisan is somebody who is skilled at a particular specialty craft or trade um, by design. So you can see we have the potter's wheel, someone is basket weaving, and we even have glass blowing, um, which is very famous in Venice. Venetian glass is famous the world over. On the right side, we have some shady characters here. We have the loan shark, we have the cat burglar, and we have this shady guy stuffing money that probably isn't his into his jacket pocket. And the word for all these people, we could describe them as artful. When someone's artful, um, they're like the artful dodger. They're slick, they're sneaky, and they're very skilled at putting one over or fooling or tricking or robbing or swindling other people. Um, the artful dodger phrase comes from a famous book called Oliver Twist by... Uh, Charles Dickens, and the artful dodger was a pickpocket uh, who was very good, very slick at his job. So now that you know what artful and artisan mean, what do you suppose the root art means? You're right, it means skill, because they are skilled with their hands, they are skilled at being shady. <laughs> All right, odd. On the left, if something is audible, that means that you're able to hear it. 
I also include uh, this recognizable graphic. Audible is the name of an audiobook company. So I would guess that they named it Audible because the books are able to be heard. So if Audible means that it can be heard, in Audible, remember this prefix from before, in means not, inaudible means I can't hear you. Yeah, see if people talk during class, they can't hear me. It's not good. Now over here we have a totally different form of the root. Audition. Uh, this is Quintavious Johnson and if you watch America's Got Talent like I do, I'm rooting for him. Now when you go on shows like America's Got Talent or The Voice or if you are going out for the play, you're auditioning. And what that means is that you are performing so people can hear you. Okay. So odd obviously means hear or sound. And that's all folks. Reminders. Don't turn this off till you hear the reminders. First and foremost, don't forget to study all of your roots from weeks one, two, and three. All of them are on the test. The unit test is cumulative. Unlike the previous weeks, which were quizzes, so you had quiz one, you had quiz two, you don't have a quiz this week. You have a test on one, two, and three. So it's really important that you really spend some time studying. Um, and I'm going to show you a, a cool study tool that you can use on the next slide. Um, don't forget that you do have word trees to do. Again, you only have seven. And remember, no cheating. Don't steal words from my presentation. Find your own, please. Now, here's the study tool I want to share with you. You can check it out at www.quizlet.com. This is an awesome resource. I actually even use this for some of my grad school classes. Um, it's phenomenal. You can go to this website and make digital flashcards, and you can access them from any computer so long as it has an internet connection, so they're stored in the cloud. You can make practice quizzes, play games with your words that you're trying to study. You can practice spelling if spelling is one of your weaknesses. Um, you can even have words read to you in different languages, which is great for some of your foreign language classes. So this is a tool that isn't just great for English class. Obviously, you have lots of important vocabulary for your other classes, too. So here's a brief video um, that kind of gives you an overview of Quizlet. Highly recommend this. And that's it. Get studying, lovelies. I'll see you in class. Bye, Nuggets.